So now we're discussing the uh, three use cases corresponding to the defense uh, area. You will find that there are, the three use cases are sort of related. They correspond to three different stages or styles of, um, of um, big data use within uh, defense. They're all corresponding to a basic idea that uh, defense is supported by uh, among other things, lots of sensors, whether sensors uh, from either on aircraft or on the ground or on military or other vehicles. And those, uh, that information, it covers all sorts of things from the weather, uh, through, through video, through um, observation of other parts of the wavelength. And those are all transmitted somewhere um, to make decisions. and. Um, it's supporting that decision making that these uh, use cases are um, implemented for. So here we have the rather general scenario. Um, defense is, is obviously associated with the real world. So we have three dimensional worlds and actually four if you put time into it. And visualization is very important because quick decisions are needed and most of the information one gets is geospatially tagged. When you have a webcam, you know where that webcam is. And the amount of geo tagged geospatial data is rapidly increasing as more and more devices are automatically geolocated without any special action needed. So there is something called a geographical information system we'll discuss in the next slide. And that's actually uh, familiar from Google Maps or Microsoft Virtual Earth. And it's actually capable of processing a lot of information. And the basic model is the one you see for the weather. In the weather, you get a basic map or maybe a basic satellite picture. And superimposed on that map, you have layers. Um, recently, we just had a big cold freeze, and the layers are sort of too cold to. We are called this a lot. Traditional layers, other layers are clouds, radar, and so on. So, the GIS is built around taking a, the, the, the world, uh, which is uh, typically 2D, or in the case of Google Earth, could be 3D, and superimposing on that world information, either directly in terms of the color as in the radar. Or as maybe a, a link that you can press to get further information. And typically, um, if you look at information that GIS display, they have two types: sort of bitmaps, and which is blobs of data, images in various formats. Um, and the other one is so-called vector format. You see that just in any any processing on. PowerPoint or anything. You either have a format that's trivially scalable, which is a vector format, because you have a logical description of the shape, or you have a bitmap. And objects, uh, and then you have all these, uh, this vector format has all sorts of uh, different objects in it. Uh, KML is a, is a very famous uh, format uh, uh, popularized by Google for map uh, data, and um, there are other types of related formats which are probably more complicated. And you obviously have to put them all in the right place. And there's obviously, you when you're telling the command that the information corresponds to this point, it matters that it's this point and not a nearby point. Then when you take all this data, you need to do some analytics like, can my tank go from A to B through C without getting stuck in the mud? And so that's a sort of path analysis application, which various software uh, is around to, to do. And um, there's also some, they also want to superimpose weather simulation. That's so where HPC might come in. And then to support, and then we might have a clustering analysis on some of the Data, that's where principal component analysis and ICA come in. And what is the software for this? Well, the, historically, it's probably been geospatial relational databases with geospatial extensions. Uh, it needs those extensions because traditional SQL would not nationally support queries, which were spatial queries. Find out all the enemy soldiers in uh, 
two kilometer by three kilometer window. That is not something SQL naturally supports. But there are clear extended uh, databases and extended um, GIS systems that allow all of that to happen. Whether that's the right way to do it today is not at all obvious, given the uh, probably clouds with I mean, Google Maps and the equivalent Microsoft product and Yahoo products have emphasized the value of having all this data stored in the cloud, and then your front end client gathers the data from the cloud, all the basic map data and all the overlays and presents it to you. Um, and the point, and this is then the point of the futures. It is intelligent. This is called an intelligent system because well, this front end, this GIS front end, is gathering data to make intelligent decisions, which are obviously critical for the military. And visualization is critical. Um, we have the uh, warfighter, first responders in the front. They need. They might only have cell phones. And so you need to be able to have these things automatically run at the resolution appropriate for display on small devices. Further, for the military applications, everything is security is critical. And um, you need to make certain that when your soldier is captured, there's information on his handheld is not compromised. So this is a pretty challenging application, but it's an application that's been studied for an awful long time. And this is sort of called command and control, and uh, systems that we've built for a long time. What's interesting over the last 15 years, the com community, the commodity application has come along, and that has, used to be true called um, um, disaster response and uh, crisis. Uh, Crisis um, containment that the uh, response that when you have an actual crisis and you like an earthquake or a fire or, or freezing weather, you have the same types of issues in decision making that you do in the military. So these command and control systems used to be specialized to the military, but now earthquakes, like the nuclear meltdown in Japan, those all actually need the same technology. So this is actually now broader based. So here we have a GIS described. Um, Esri is a dominant company in this field, producing commercial products. Uh, and of course, we have the uh, standard web com um, products. And on the um, middle uh, right, we actually have a typical GIS display with a map and uh, various overlays. Um, we have here a drone gathering data. Here we have. Uh, Sensors in a helmet gathering data in case the, the, the soldier's injured. And here we have some um, data gathering truck. We look at the classification, we have parallelism over sensors, parallelism over people accessing the data. It's clearly streaming. We need to classify the data according to its implication. There's lots of pleasingly parallel computation. Every image can be analyzed independently to find out what it's saying. And we need the GIS to display it, so those are the categories.